Oh, hey. How you doing? I was just reading this fascinating article here about the driving differences, culturally speaking, between Canada and other countries. And it's really an incredible article, actually. The article states that in other cultures, you have to be skilled to get a driver's license. Whereas here, we'll give one to someone who's too nervous to drive. I don't like this at all. <sighs> we'll give one to folks who never learn to drive. I need help. I need help. I need help. And we won't take licenses away from people who road rage. You. There's a side story in here about a new Canadian who thinks that texting and driving is funny. <laughs> Another about a man who drives with a serious brain injury. I don't even recall what I hit at this time. And a jaw-dropping piece about a guy who drives drunk. This is the road I like to have at least a few beer so I can, you know, be more calm. And finally, there's a blurb about an Edmontonian who only ever drives distracted. Sticker time! Decorate. Help decorate. With me? The article concludes by saying that one of those people is... <laughs> ...is Canada's worst driver. <laughs> Driving with a full carload of people can be a daunting experience. When a vehicle is packed to the brim with passengers, you can feel like sardines in a can in there, and that feeling can put added pressure on the driver. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to load each other into that van right there and then drive one another around a figure eight course. And they'll be doing it in reverse. This is primarily to teach you one thing, and that is how to use your mirrors in reverse. All right? So watch this. I'm going to stare in this mirror, and I want to hug the inside part of this turn. So that's what I do. And to come around the inside part of this turn, I never have to look anywhere but at this mirror. Watch. I'm just going to stare at it. If you stop, that's when you get confused, right? If I stare at this, look, I'm going to run into that garbage can, am I? Ooh, yes, I am, so I have to turn to the right. That will steer me away from it. I'll miss it just by an inch. Ooh, so close. Because I'm moving, I can see how much my steering input matters. And I can play with it, you know? I can zigzag the whole way. Crystal doesn't see how much my steering matters. She's too busy texting. <laughs> Pay attention, men. I We're am. here for you. I am. We're here for you. The second half is the same as the first, just on the opposite side. Everybody get in. Oh, Ooh. sweet. Lou says that before rehab, she wouldn't have even attempted this. <laughs> this is scary. But based on her lack of movement... You gotta keep moving. It feels like she's not attempting it now. Keep moving and looking in your mirror. During her first 10 minutes behind the wheel... If you continue back from there, you can save this. Lou spends eight and a half minutes completely stopped. Ah! Now I'm hung up. This actually is a pretty big step forward. Yeah? Yeah. That's Derek, Lou's common-law husband. As soon as she gets somewhere, she stops yeah. and then steers and then doesn't know what's going on. Lou only got her driver's license last year. And before coming to rehab, she had never really reversed. Uh, I'm a little confused now. On our figure eight course, Lou stopped 46 times. Right here, girl. Oh my gosh. I want Tyler to inform the group of his dark driving secret. What? What? You tell him. No. Yeah. Admit. 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 Okay, I drink and drive sometimes. Not all the time, but I do. Buddy, you cannot understand what you're doing when you're drinking. You can't see right. You can't move right. Did you guys know that about him? That he's a habitual drinker and driver? Not all the time. 
What does that mean, Jenna? Not all the time. He doesn't do it seven days a week? Tyler's wife, Jana, might be enabling his drinking and driving. You gotta take the keys on Wednesdays, the day that he goes to the bar. When Tyler met our experts a few days ago, he told us that his dirty habit was limited to Wednesdays. Once a week, you know, it's only on Wednesdays, basically, you know. I go to, go to the bar, have, like, say, two beer and a wings. When you said you had two drinks, it just brought me back to my 30 years as a police officer, where probably over half the impaired drivers I arrested claimed they'd had two drinks. That's Cam Woolley, our legal expert. Beside him is our high-speed driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau. We also have therapist, Shamala Kiru, and our head driving instructor is Tim Danter. How much do you really drink and then get behind the wheel? About three to four beer. Let's actually tell the truth. It's not Wednesday, like every Wednesday. It could be a Tuesday, it could be a Wednesday, it could be a Friday. Could be any day of the week. Could be, I'm just going to get smokes at the corner store and then he's gone for three hours. I think I did pretty good. Tyler has no idea what good driving is. Does anybody here know, I do, does anybody here know anybody that died as a result of drinking and driving? I do, I had a high school friend named he got taken out at a four-way intersection by a drunk that came through a red light and clipped him. Oh, T-boned him when he was 19. That's my friend. Who's yours? My friend is and he killed her crossing the street in a 60 zone going 112, showing off to his friends. Wow. 19 years old, she never got to get married, she never got to do any of that stuff. I hear ya. Yeah. Diana starts this challenge by praying, lighting incense, and drawing strange symbols on the windshield. Uh, a symbol of eternal love. Yeah. And infinity beyond that. I'm dying. Uh, what are you doing? We're dying back here. That You're would... dying back there. There's eternal life. Why are you so scared? You're dying from, from, uh, from Diana's incense? Yeah, it's yeah. killing all of us. Funny that you would say you're killing all of us from a piece of a piece of incense, and you text and drive all the time mm -hmm. at high speed. Different things kill different people, I guess. Let's Fire see. up and let's get out of here. Incense in the car? Oh, steady, Andrew. Like she's got a lighter that comes down from her mirror. She burns it in the uh, in the side of her uh, door. That's Jody, Diana's concerned brother-in-law. That's how she drives. Even though I explained that drivers should focus on the mirror that's on the inside of the turn, Diana is constantly jumping from one mirror to the other. Oh, man! Diana needs to focus on driving instead of on superstition. You know what? It had nothing to do with focus. It's nothing bigger. to do with focus, eh? Mike lost his license after suffering a brain injury 12 years ago. Very, very quiet, okay, guys? Four years ago, at a brain injury clinic in Ottawa, Mike learned to drive all over again, then was retested for his license. And it's a normal, standard driver's license test? Yes. Nothing unique yes. about it? That's Christian, Mike's wife. And at the time, you didn't think he should have a license? No. No. Perhaps Mike shouldn't have a license now. Mike's brain injury is a real concern. I, I hit one sidewall. Uneducated Daniela makes it around the first half without hitting anything. OK, now I have to look on that side. She's such a conundrum because driving in reverse in a straight line the other day, she was a disaster. Exactly, yeah. That's Chantal, Daniela's sister. I'm so proud. On her entire drive. Oopsies. That's OK. Daniela only hits twice and only stops once. <laughs> Crystal never uses her side mirrors. Do you see me? Like, what am I supposed to see? 
my face. No. No, you don't. You don't have it set correctly. Well, I don't know how to set a mirror, Andrew. You know I've never done this before. Oh, my God, I'm already angry, and I haven't even started driving. <sighs> Setting a mirror shouldn't make you angry. This is what we're here for. Crystal should focus on the mirror. Watching this mirror, Crystal, this mirror. That's on the inside of the turn. Crystal, this mirror. But she's refusing to do that. God, I can't see you. She's also refusing to drive at a slow, crawling pace. Go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow. See, that's not a crawl, Crystal. That's not going in a crawl. Crystal's aggressive driving punctured the tire. It's something she's frighteningly familiar with. I break a lot of tires, actually. Do you really? Yeah. Like how I, often? Like once a month. Like once a month you get a flat? Yeah. Pam Rinder drives with all the nominees and nominators on board. I've learned that if you pay concentration on the right position, you can do anything. What Am Rinder does is record the day's first and only perfect run. <laughs> when we come back, it's time for your favorite challenge. <laughs> the water tank challenge. Entertaining Canadians since 2005. Really pissing off the bad drivers, though. If you find yourself driving across provincial and or territorial borders within Canada, you should really do yourself a favor and pick up the local driver's handbook. This one's from none of us. You should do that because every single province and territory within our country has their own road rules and their own road signs. Without the local book, you might find yourself in Nova Scotia looking at that particular sign and thinking, what the hell does that mean? Does that mean that there are unicyclists juggling balls in this neighborhood? Clearly that can't be right. So while I look that sign up in the Nova Scotian handbook, Canada's worst drivers will take our annual road signs test. Well, does that sign mean? Here's a hint. It's a cautionary sign. It almost looks like a Libra symbol because he's holding up the scales. <sighs> wow. Like a road with lots of ruts and bumps. And to be careful, especially if you're on a motorbike. Signs with yellow backgrounds are always cautionary. Oh gosh, I don't know that one. Like this Ontario sign, which warns of an area... There's a bridge. ...where there is no bridge. Drive over a creek. But water does often pool on the road. Hmm. You know what? That symbol is the Aquarius symbol for synchronicity. This sign warns of steep drop-offs. Are you holding it right? This sign? The sharp turn. Warns of an obstacle. Crosswalk. You should keep to the left of. I see these in Edmonton all the time. That means that you've got to stick to the left-hand side. What? There's an obstacle here that you should be keeping to the left of. The lines go down. That's the side you stay on. Therefore, this one means? This one, you have to stick to the right side. OK. Because there's construction? Is that why it's yellow? Construction-related signs are always orange. There's a lot of lightning strikes. Uh, but electrical uh, wires overhead. Very good, correct. Out of all of Canada's worst drivers... You're not, not allowed to do something. Crystal is the worst at signs. She really needs to study the driver's handbook. They're all in the driver's handbook? All right, some of the things we do on this show 
are admittedly kind of goofy, but everything does have a serious point. Like the challenge we're about to start. It's actually the most popular challenge we do on the program, and it has an extraordinarily serious point. It demonstrates the way that weight shifts in a vehicle if you slow down or speed up suddenly. It also teaches the bad drivers that they have to keep their wits about them even in the craziest of situations. That's right. Excuse me. It's, uh, it's time for our annual water tank test. This year's water tank car is a 1992 Buick Roadmaster. If the 200 liters of water on its roof gets sloshing, that water will travel through these hoses and will eventually be deposited upon the driver's head. This year's water tank course starts on a straightaway where drivers must hit 60 kilometers an hour. Then they must slow down in time to make this turn. I'll show you how it's done. First of all, I must make a very slow and easy acceleration. Well, that's too fast. Oh, that's too fast, right away. Uh, I have to make a very slow and smooth takeoff. I'm at 40, I'm at 50. I'm at 60 and I'm smoothly, smooth, smoothly, smoothly decelerating. Oh, stop, Andrew, stop, stop, stop. Oh, yeah. No problem. And I'm coming around the first turn. This is about learning vehicle dynamic. If you brake, there'll be a weight shift towards the front. If you accelerate, the weight will shift towards the back. So it's about learning vehicle dynamic. The precision steering section leads to a phantom shopping cart, which leads to a concrete corral, which I must leave in reverse. And to do that, I'm gonna have to go back and forth a few times. Once I'm out... I'm out, I'm out, I'm out! A slight turn leads me to a slow slalom. Crawling, crawling, crawling. And once that's over... I am done. I lost 20 liters of water. Now, how can Canada's worst drivers do? Tyler! will do badly. No turning back, babe. OK. Hang on. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh. God, Tyler! Oh, oh my God! I'm flat. Oh, oh, my God! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, 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 oh. Tyler's pedal control is clearly terrible on the deceleration. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> it's terrible on the Phantom shopping cart. <laughs> and it's terrible in the concrete corral. And in the slow slalom, you guessed it. Oh my God, Tyler's! <laughs> Tyler's pedal control is terrible. In fact, he lost all but 15 liters of water. That thing was full. Daniela has always been concerned about her lack of pedal control. This one here means the most to me out of all the challenges. This is the one I'm going to try the hardest on. I can't even see. Okay, 40, 20, 30. Daniela actually accelerates quite smoothly. 50, 50, 55, 58, 59, 60. But she runs out of room. <laughs> Daniela's pedal control has a long way to go. My fingers are prunes.
when we come back. I don't think I can do this. The rest of Canada's worst drivers run the water tank challenge. <laughs> Worst drivers are having their pedal control tested on our annual water tank challenge. And Lou is up next. Oh, 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 I always started. I can't. I don't think I, I, don't think I can do this. She's supposed to accelerate up to 60. Yeah, I'm going as slow as I can. No, you're good. I, okay. Oh. I don't think I can do this. No. I don't think I can do this. That was a near drowning. On her second attempt, I'm going 40. Lou's top speed is 40. And then I gotta slow down for the turn slowly, and I can't, like, I, I, can't, I can't do this. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's not all right. That's okay. It's the actions of a person ah, ah, ah. who is afraid to make driving decisions. Getting it. Ah, ah, ah. In the turnaround section, I, I, because I don't, I don't know how to get out of here. Lou spends more time stopped than moving. I don't know how to get out of it. Is there any benefit in me kind of helping you get out through S-turns, etc.? Yeah. For the next half hour, I direct Lou to the end of the course. Watch, 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 watch! Crystal is notoriously aggressive with her pedals. 60 and only 60. Feathering petals. Oh my god. I don't want to get wet. Oh my god. No. No! Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh, oh, Why oh, is this oh, 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 Why are you stopping? Get up to 60! Get up to 60! Straight out of beard! Get up to 60! Whoa. Why is that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, stop, stop, <laughs> just stop. And with that, Crystal quits. I'm done. <laughs> Grab my phone. Diana's pedal control on the 60K an hour straightaway is far from smooth. 60 kilometers an hour. Okay. Let's go. And for the rest of the test, it doesn't get any better. We're almost there. <laughs> Holy Mike takes forever to get up to 60, which means he has no room to break. 60. 60. Wow, 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 Sweet, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yay. Well, you can slow down and wait till I, you can see. I am going slow. Oh, my God, now I got a pee. <laughs> <laughs> What Mike has to do is become smoother on the paddles. Mike loses more than half his water. By the end of it, I have had the ability to control the vehicle without getting all wet. Amrinder has a nominator with a back problem. So, do not get me wet. Tim Danter has been forced by our production staff to ride shotgun. Yeah, I go 60. Yeah. No, not, not here. Here is a dead end with our cameraman Stop. and production vehicles. Stop. 
Wrong turn. From here to the finish, Amrinder is pretty much perfect. I haven't wet my pants in a long time. When we come back, it's our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. You're like the queen of killing headlights. If you want to stick a thread through the eye of a needle, you take the thread, but you don't look at it. You stare directly through the eye of the needle. Your peripheral vision will see the thread. It's the exact same thing with a car trying to fit through a tight space. If you want to thread your car through a very narrow opening, you look directly in the center of that narrow opening. You don't look at your car. Your peripheral vision will see that. Every year on Canada's Worst Driver, we do a challenge called the Eye of the Needle. And to prepare for that, our expert Philippe Letourneau will now teach the nominees to look where they want to go. Driving is all about vision. 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 Philippe starts Crystal's vision lesson by locking her cell phone away in the glove box. Oh my god, I need to be able to see it. No. What Crystal needs to see is this cone. Hit the cone, middle of the bumper. Middle of the bumper. To hit the cone with the middle of the bumper, all of Canada's worst drivers stare directly at the cone as they drive towards it. And they all hit the cone smack dab in the middle of the bumper. How did you get there? I looked at the cone. I looked at the cone. I looked at the cone. We always, always ask our drivers to look where? Both ways. No, look, Tyler. No, what? Look where you want oh, to go. Look where you want to go, yes. So, to go between these two cones, where should drivers look? I want you to look at that middle cone and not at, not at the outside cone. By staring at the middle cone. And bam. All of Canada's worst drivers are able to squeeze through this fairly tight gap. Nice. The next step in the lesson is driving through the same gate without having a target cone to fixate on. You don't have your reference point anymore. Yeah. So what are you going to look at? I don't know. I think I might just make one up. Looking at a target that's just made up really isn't easy. Oops. When we were traveling towards the gate, I was looking at your eyes, and I could see your eyes going like this. I was looking at them, I agree, but I was looking for a mark in the pavement that I could try to look at instead. Look at the empty gap, look at the empty gap, look at the empty gap. All of Canada's worst drivers are able to stare through and drive through the empty gap. And now, Crystal wants to practice doing it with her cell phone. But just allow... But I feel like I could do this even having my phone. <laughs> I can. No. This year's Eye of the Needle course contains five arches on a long, curving turn the drivers must thread their way through while maintaining 70 kilometers an hour. And going 70 should be easy because the vehicle they'll be driving is our brand new Mustang. Diana will show you how this is done just as soon as she tells me what she thinks this is like. This is like the Ark of the Covenant. There's six colors of the rainbow. No, 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 no. This is like driving. This okay, is like driving. Okay. This is like two transport trucks squeezing together as you're passing between them. This is not like the Ark of the Covenant at all. Here's Diana's eye of the needle run. Let's do this. Diana does this perfectly. Okay, center. By looking straight through the center of each arch. Awesome. Awesome. And regularly checking her speed. Oh, you're doing good, you're doing good, center, center. Yeah. Slow down a little bit, slow down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! 
All right. Without any distractions in the car, Diana pulls off a perfect run. Why do you think you did so well? Uh, probably the training with Philip. And? And getting rid of the distractions. Yeah. Lou definitely understands our message, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go. No, 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 look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go. Okay. Looking where you want to go is apparently easier said than done. Well, it's you did way one, right? harder than oh, it looks. I know. Daniela says she's a bad driver because her family has always done her driving for her. Are you happy with this aspect of your life that nobody's going to come and rescue you finally? Not really. <laughs> you think you are happy with it? Because it means you're gaining independence. Yeah, baby steps. Baby steps. One, two, three. For the second time in two episodes, Daniela has knocked a headlight off the car. You're like the queen of killing headlights. Can I keep it? Amrinder is up next. Amrinder was a terror on the roads before coming to rehab, specifically because he insisted on speeding. Can he do this at 70? Let's find out. Amrinder slaughters the first arch. And headed for the second, he develops tunnel vision, which means he's no longer concentrating on his speed, which creeps up to 90. <laughs> Amrinder said he wouldn't speed. Why am I slapping you? What was speeding? Because you were going 90. That's why. When we come back, oh! the rest of Canada's worst drivers run the eye of the needle. I think I'm going to throw up. Canada's worst drivers are doing this year's eye of the needle challenge on a corner we call the Flora Turn. And you know why we call it the Flora Turn, don't you? We call it the Flora Turn because back in season eight, a Canada's Worst Driver nominee named Flora pinned the gas pedal and couldn't make it around the corner. Tyler remembers watching Flora's spectacular crash from the safety of his couch. And he remembers thinking, you idiot, you know, I just laugh, you know. I'm excited, you know, I know I can do this, babe. I know you can do it, too. Remember, Tyler routinely drives drunk. Can Tyler do this sober? Let's see. One. Two. God, Way 120. Too fast. Way oh, too fast. This is not going to end well. Whoa. Are you okay? Are you all right? Yeah. Oh. I think I need to get out of the car. What? I gotta get out. I think I'm gonna throw up. Oh, no way. Tyler's a guy that brags about drinking and driving. Look how poorly he did there. Look indeed. Three. When Tyler hit the fourth arch. Yay! 
He looked where he was going instead of where he wanted to go. Staring straight into the field made him panic and stomp on the brake and skid straight into the field. Yeah, he was looking out in the grass, and that's where he landed. Exactly. And I'm here to say that somebody that can't handle that sober at 70 should drive with zero blood alcohol, not one beer. Oh, zero. I Nothing. understand you, man. OK. Man, I skirt myself. The fact that Tyler drinks and drives is beyond ridiculous. He can't do these challenges sober, so why the f would he have one drink and drive? Mike frequently tells himself that he doesn't have a brain injury. Because I want to be better, and if I don't think I'm hurt, I'm not hurt. But you are hurt, and so I wonder, is the optimism sometimes so extreme that you might be putting yourself and or others at risk? I don't know, but I do it. Don't slow down. You gotta hit 70 and stay at 70. Mike was at 70, but now he's accelerating towards 100. Ooh. Mike cannot remember this morning's lesson. Ever since the accident, I cannot remember what I did today, but I will remember three days from now that I did what I did today. You might have better recall on Philippe's lesson next week than you do today. That, I believe, is the fact. Christian, is that correct? Yeah, generally to about four days to a week later. Wow. Crystal has given her brother Stephen her cell phone to prevent texting while on this course. How many text messages would you send in one day? A couple thousand. No. No, you don't send a couple of thousand text messages. Yes, I do. What? For, no, you don't. Minimum one text message every minute. And I text until 3 in the morning. But, but, but a couple thousand text messages a day? <laughs> I've felt old before, but now I feel like I'm a million. I mean, through the hole, through the hole, through the hole. Just look. I'm not going to look at the posts. Good you, job. Andrew. Good job. Oh. Crystal is looking where she wants to go and steering well, but she's going 110. Oh, oh no, no. No, I'm going to hit it. Yes. Good. Crystal doesn't care that she was 40K over the speed limit. I'll slow down. Can I have my phone? <laughs> When we come back, the experts and I choose this episode's graduate. I don't think there's anything else that he could show me that I wouldn't already know. It's time for our experts to find out which Canada's Worst Driver nominee wants to graduate this week. Starting with Tyler who this episode informed the other Canada's Worst Driver nominees that he routinely drives drunk. What was their reaction to that, and what was your reaction back to them? Holy <laughs> hmm. Well... One of my friends, Lou, she had a person that died from drink or drive right. And she posted a picture of her friend on the wall with a note, you know, saying that happened, you know. And you know what, I can only, that's Lou's best friend, right? And I just started thinking, you know, what happens if that's my best friend on there, you know? It really shook me, and I, I'm not going to drink and drive. Do you want to graduate this week? No. No. No, I, I want to stay and continue my learning skills that I used to have. No. Like, I just, like, feel dumb. Diana might graduate. She was flawless on the Eye of the Needle run and was fastest on the reverse figure eight. 
Do you deserve to graduate? I do want to graduate, but in the same breath, uh, there's still lots to learn. Amrinder learned to reverse so well, he was perfect on the figure eight course. Do you want to graduate this episode? I do want to graduate. Do you feel like you deserve it? Yes, I would feel like I deserved it because I have learned a lot. In what way? In terms of vision. I have started seeing more than I used to see before. Crystal also wants to graduate. Yeah, and the only person that I'm really, like, getting anything from is Philippe, and I think he's already taught me anything that he can, and you I think can't... he's taught you everything he can? I don't think there's anything else that he could show me that I wouldn't already know. Don't laugh! Uh, I just think it's amazing that you've got a high-level uh, driving instructor who has taught at tracks and has taught with major car but companies for years. But he teaches at such a high level that I don't need that stuff. I think it's amazing that you've got such a high-level uh, car teacher. I'm done. Can I go? Do you think I've taught you everything? No, but it's not going to be from you that I'm going to learn that. I have to do a lot of that on my own. Whoa. Time out. What Philippe teaches you and what I teach you and what I train you in is what's going to keep you alive on the road. The shortlist for graduation this episode is Amrinder and Diana, whom Tim believes is still too distracted behind the wheel. So he's voting for Amrinder to graduate. If we have to pick someone, yes. Shamla, who do you think? I'm going to go with Amrinder. OK, because? I'm not prepared to have Diana graduate today. OK. Philippe? Uh, I will go with uh, Diana personally. For me, the. Uh... Eye of the Needle is one of the most important challenge yeah. uh, in this episode. Um, all the archers were up at the end of her run. I agree. I think it's Diana, just because for the simple fact that she did drive better. So that's two votes for Amrinder and two votes for Diana. Which means, Cam, it's up to you. Today, the experts and I were divided on who is or is not rehabilitated enough to go home. But Amrinder, one person did receive enough votes. And Diana, the person who will be leaving this episode, is... You, Amrinder. Yes, man. You've proven yourself worthy of being on Canadian roads, so... Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Here's your Thank license you. back. And here's your 20 bucks. <laughs> you lost a bet? <laughs> yep. Uh, Who did you bet on? I was going home before him. <laughs> Amrinder is going home because... Before rehab, he drove in ways that were culturally appropriate for his Indian driver's license but not for his Canadian driver's license. Because some of the things doesn't make sense in my brain, like stop signs. Amrinder sped all the time. He rarely used blinkers. And he never did shoulder checks. Why do I have to shoulder check if I have extra set of mirrors? In rehab, Amrinder learned that speed kills. Signs matter. We cannot make a left turn at all, so right it is and that shoulder checking works. Red, green. Get out of here. And shoulder check. Look, shoulder check. I'm in your blind spot. <laughs> in the coming weeks, one of these six people will be blindsided with the simple fact that they are Canada's worst driver. Next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. So what do you think I want to talk to you about today? The weather. The nominees learn the dangers of driving distracted. It's just me and my own thoughts and my own distractions that are getting in the way. They try to stay the course on our annual trough challenge. I don't think that's going to help anything. 
and their reflexes are put to the test on something we call Swerve and Avoid. Although this year, there isn't much avoiding. you. Look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go, look where you want to go.